Ethiopia has been home to the discovery of the oldest human fossils, which also provides proof of ritualistic burial practices and spiritual beliefs. The tool marks on two of the three 160,000-year-old Homo sapiens skulls indicate that they were cut and polished as soon as they died. According to the experts, it is impossible to tell whether the deceased's flesh or brains were eaten as part of a cannibalistic rite. Yet, the Hurtoman is an obscure figure to many. The parietal bone and the temporal line both have areas of the Hurtoman skull that have vertical incisions. Deep cut marks may be seen on other bones, which are compatible with the technique used to remove the flesh from the bones. The repetitive scratching around the brain case on some of the bones has been determined to be symbolic modification rather than cannibalism. The Hurtoman appears to have engaged in a mortuary rite, which may be the first documentation of a burial practice in human history. The Herto human remains discovered in Ethiopia that have been dated to between 160,000 and 154,000 years old. It has been 25 years since these human remains from the Buri Formation sedimentary deposits were found. Given that we knew so little about this epoch in human history at the time, the discovery of the Herto man was noteworthy. The bones age fell between 300,000 and 100,000 years ago, a significant void in the African human fossil record. Indeed, the Herto man is thought to be one of the earliest known Homo sapiens fossils. According to descriptions, their anatomical makeup was just outside the range of the average modern person. As a result, they have been given the appellation Homo sapien adultu, which in the local language means elder. Similar to the missing link that Victorian anthropologists looked for to link humans to other primates, the closeness of Homo sapiens and Hurtoman represented a transition between the ancient human branch and the more modern human. So what does it all signify? And what can it reveal about earlier stages of human evolution? The Herto man's fossils included a nearly entire skull that was only lacking the left skull cap, a few fragments of skull that included a parietal bone, and a nearly full skull of a young child that was thought to be around six or seven years old. The child's skull and another adult's, which were too fragmented to reconstruct, both had cut markings that suggested early funeral customs. The child's skull showed signs that the muscles at the base of the skull had been severed after death. The entire cranium was worn smooth as though by frequent handling, and the borders and back of the cranial base were broken away and polished. The second adult skull had parallel ridges around its circumference that appeared to be the result of a stone tool repeatedly drawing, across the skull's surface, in a pattern that was distinct from that generated during defleshing, as with cannibalism. Even the almost fully developed adult skull has some incision marks. The Herto people performed different funeral rites than earlier hominids, some of whom chopped skulls open and removed the flesh, but who evidently did not polish or scratch decorate them. Anthropologists have documented alterations similar to those in the Herto skulls from cultures where ancestors' skulls are revered and treasured, such as in Papua New Guinea. In point of fact, Anthropologists have discovered comparable bone alterations in cultures where ancestors' skulls are revered and preserved. The marks, according to them, are proof of a planned and drawn-out ritualistic funeral. Additionally, a 600,000-year-old skull discovered earlier in the same area has cut marks indicative of tissue removal but no polishing. Furthermore, it is remarkable that the Herto skulls were not discovered with other bones from their bodies, which led the researchers to believe that the individuals were carrying the skulls as they moved. We have no way of understanding why they did it, whether as part of a cannibalistic ritual or not, they probably sliced the muscles and cracked the bases of some skulls to take the brain. The most complete of the three fossil skulls, which is most likely that of a male, is a little bit larger than the extreme seen in modern Homo sapiens but it exhibits other traits that are typical of modern humans, such as less noticeable brow ridges than those of pre-homo sapiens and a higher cranial vault. These similarities led the researchers to classify the fossils in the same genus and species as modern humans, but they added the subspecies name Homo sapiens idaltu to distinguish them from Homo sapiens sapiens, the name of the current species of humans. Ethiopia has long been acknowledged as a region notable for its prehistoric proto-human artifacts, some of which date as far back as 6 million years. 
These bones were dated between 160,000 and 154,000 years ago using the Argon dating technique, putting them in the context of human evolution. The Middle Awash Valley in Ethiopia is where the fossilized hominid known as Bodo Man was found. To comprehend the origins of our species, Homo sapiens, Bodo and Herto Man are essential fossils. The ancient inhabitants may have been distant cousins of the Herto modern human populations that lived in the same region. The 600,000 year old Ethiopian skull known as Bodo Man, it is one of the earliest ancient remains that we may regard as being closer to Homo sapiens and is maybe an ancestor of the modern human populations that first appeared in East Africa 200,000 years ago. Bodo exhibits archaic traits that truly show a split between Homo ergaster erectus and Homo sapiens. The glabella interrupts the extremely thick, double-arched superorbital torus. Throughout the human fossil record, it has the widest nasal opening below the nasal bones, a projecting and broad middle face. What's more? The morphological continuity that the Bodo Carbway Herto specimens demonstrate over time is astounding. For instance, the change to a lighter superorbital torus, although maintaining a double arch, and the appearance of more contemporary zygomatics. The Carbway skull from Zambia and the Bodo skull, according to Spanish anthropologist Roberto says, also share features with Asian specimens of Homo erectus, such as the Sangaran 17 skull from Java, Indonesia including a broad zygomatics, thick superorbital torus, long and sloping forehead, sagittal keel and broad nasal aperture. At one million years old, the Sangiran skull from Java raises the intriguing possibility that Homo erectus reversed its migration and returned to East Africa. Reverse migrations from Asia to Africa are not logical. As stated, the bones of Herto Man were defined by the experts as being slightly outside of the anatomically contemporary human. The earliest specimens that had been found in Africa were taken into consideration, and the bone structures were compared. This allowed them to recognize Herto as a distinct subspecies of the Homo sapiens branch. The validity of the conclusion that these bones were a subspecies of Homo sapiens, however, was questioned by anthropologist Chris Stringer of the British Museum. He came to his conclusions by contrasting the skulls with others that had been discovered in Australasia during the late Pleistocene period, a geologic age that spanned over 2 million years before ending barely 12,000 years ago. This includes the cow swamp skull that has primitive Homo erectus-like features. Although taking note of these issues, the discoverers of Herto Man still believed that the Herto was anatomically unique from all other humans at this point. This led to the conclusion that the Herto Man was obviously different from modern humans. For example, the Herto skull features a tall cranial vault enclosing the brain, which is very reminiscent to a modern human. From the side, it appeared to have an overall spherical form with a comparatively flat face. About 1,450 cubic centimeters of brain could fit in the brain case. Given that the present Homo sapiens brain has a volume of 1,500 cubic centimeters, this puts the Herto man's brain size quite near to our own. Furthermore, Herto man's robust skull has a protruding brow ridge that is comparable to the Cro Magnon of Europe, indicating that they share the same morphology. The male cranium is long and the upper teeth are severely damaged for some reason. However, there are also some variances. The Herto skull is noticeably longer and overall greater in size than the ordinary modern human skull. The cheekbones and parietal bones, the rear of the skull, in comparison, are relatively weak, though the occipital bone at the base of the back of the skull is significantly flexed. Might this be a result of a brain that is fast changing and expanding, having weaker bone structure? Or did this large, Weak skull develop as a result of additional environmental pressures? It is known that the area where these bones were discovered is sandy, with sedimentary layers from rivers, possibly indicating a freshwater lake habitat. Herto man did exhibit some remarkably human traits. They utilized tools, and they worshipped their dead. 
Among the implements discovered with the bones were those created by stone napping. Cleavers and axes were among these implements. Hurtoman is thought to have produced these tools more regularly than earlier members of the Homo sapiens branch of hominids, despite the fact that artifacts of this type are uncommon. They were butchering the remains of enormous creatures like hippos and buffalo, and they clearly knew how to take advantage of the local flora. These people used advanced stone technology, including chipped hand axes and other stone tools. Other tools of this time were formed of rock, frequently using fine grained basalt while points and blades were typically made of obsidian. Bovine and hippo carcasses that exhibit signs of human-made cut marks are also found near the locations where Herto Man was discovered. This suggests a lengthy history of butchering, and a panchang for hippos. Herto Man might have had a far better life than the agriculturalists who arrived in later, millennia because of the abundance of resources and hunter-gatherer lifestyle. 260,000 years ago, the Orsash River was dammed, forming a shallow lake where the early humans of Herto resided. Buffaloes grazed the area, while the lake itself would have been home to hippos, crocodiles, and catfish. But were they actually Homo sapiens? The face and cranial vault of the Herto fossils are very similar to those of contemporary humans. Their proximity to Homo sapiens suggests that, if not, they are at least a very close ancestor of the species. They are among the earliest modern human fossils that have been discovered. They offer excellent evidence for understanding how our species originated. Controversially, humans are thought to have inherited their mitochondrial genes from an ancestor known as Eve, who lived in Africa some 150,000 years ago, according to research published 35 years ago, by scientists tracing evolution through changes in mitochondrial DNA, which is transferred from mother to daughter. Similar findings had been made by other scientists who had been researching the male Y chromosome, though this is also controversial. There is still no concrete evidence that the Herto fossils are Adam and Eve, despite being from a population that existed at precisely this time. The Middle Awash is a key site to understand early human evolution. If you look at a topographic map of the region, you can see how it would act as a funnel for any humans or animals coming over from Arabia as the valley opens up to the plains near the Horn of Africa. During an ice age the shallow Persian Gulf would have been dry, allowing animals and humans easy migration from South Asia to Arabia and Africa. Biologists call this region of Northeast Africa and Arabia by the term Afro-Arabia, because the geographic connections between the two regions are obvious to anyone with expertise beyond human evolution, and not limited by a particular view or theory. Given that Ethiopia lies on the border of Eurasia and Africa, just across a shallow sea from Arabia, there is no way to know if these humans evolved in Africa or came from Eurasia. Maybe they were early Homo sapiens pioneers on the fringes of an African wilderness and a failed attempt to colonize Africa? We may never... <laughs>